everyone, and welcome to the house that built legends. Welcome to Plaza de Toros de las Ventas Madrid for the 16th edition of the Red Bull X Fighters in these hallowed halls. Names like Robbie Madison, Matt Rabot, and Travis Pastrana have all carved a place in the annals of freestyle motocross history here. And this is the one and only location to host an X Fighters every single year since 2002. Tonight, an elite list of freestyle motocross athletes will see who can dominate the beautiful bull ring of Las Ventas. And boy, it was close to not happening with biblical amounts of rain falling over the last two days, but the sky has cleared more or less. The track is ready. It's 17 degrees. It's pretty much perfect for a Red Bull X Fighters. Troy Mannering with you alongside Andy Bell. Looking forward to this evening's Red Bull X Fighters action, Andy. Thanks, Troy. It's going to be epic out here tonight. We're going to take a look quickly at some of the historical moments that have happened here in Las Ventas. 16 years of Las Ventas. In the early years, wild boys like Edgar Torrenteris and Mad Mike Jones drove the fans crazy with right-side-up tricks. In 2003, Nate Adams turned the sport of freestyle motocross upside down. And in 2004, Travis Pastrana took all the old-school tricks and made them backflip combinations. In 2008, Frederick Johansson pushed the sport to a new level with the first-ever flair. Robbie Madison pushed the limits again in 2010 with his brand new Volt, which added a new twist to FMX. But Madrid is the domain of Tom Pages. He's created new moves at every Madrid stop. The special flip, the bike flip, the alley-oop flare, and in 2016, the front flare. Las Ventas Madrid, the spiritual home of freestyle motocross and the perfect spot to showcase the most spectacular tricks. As I said, many great moments here in Las Ventas, but there's one man who we just heard about that has an immense impact on the sport and has also won here an incredible four times. Unfortunately, he's not riding this weekend. Lindsay Hooper, our sideline reporter, is with Thomas Pages in the pits. Thank you very much for joining us, Tom. First of all, can you fill us in as to why you're not competing tonight? Well, uh, hey, um, I am actually uh, I'm just uh, finishing uh, my injury. You know, I got a um, shoulder surgery four months ago, and uh, now it's just time to to go back on the bike. But it's uh, unfortunately it was not possible to be back here. That must have been a tough decision. Yeah, that was really hard. At, the, at first, when I decided to get the surgery done, I knew that it would be trouble for Madrid. And uh, after winning four times in a row, I was like, I, could not, I cannot miss this year and try a fifth time. And uh, I had to get the surgery, so it's over. Is it a strange feeling not to be competing? Yeah, yeah, it's a strange feeling because uh, I'm actually uh, first started here in 2008 and it's uh, been now a long, long time and uh, I love the public, the atmosphere. This is why I write freestyle actually, just to be part of Madrid X Fighters. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sad. Yeah, I was going to ask you to expand on that because so many people talk about this being so special. Why is this venue so special to you? Well, actually, um, started starting watching freestyle here in uh, in Madrid you know it was this event was on even before I started freestyle motocross you know with the, the older the superstar of freestyle and it's, it's sort of the, the hometown of, of freestyle motocross so that's the, the place you want to be for sure so with Tom Pages not competing tonight that's opened the door for some other people to be crowned the winner here in Madrid and here are the big contenders tonight Clinton Moore, the 2015 Tour champion. He took out three of five events in his best ever season. Last year, the Australian made it to the final, but wasn't able to beat Tom Pages and finished runner-up to the four-time winner. His signature trick, the Bundy. Josh Sheehan, Mr. Double Backflip. He won the 2014 World Tour and convinces with his complete repertoire. The breathtaking duel between him and Tom Pages in Las Ventas 2014 was one of the best finals in the history of the sport, with Tom taking the win. Last year, Sheehan reached the final again and ended up in third place. His signature move? Of course, the double backflip. 
Levi Sherwood, Mr. Perfection. His style is elegant and he pushes each extension to the max. He's won eight events, more than anyone else. At the 2016 event in Las Ventas, Sherwood missed the podium by just one spot. His signature move, the ruler flip. Three contenders, each one is ready to drive the Spanish crowd crazy again and clinch the 2017 title. Well, Tom's still with me in the riders area. Tom, we've seen who we think are favourites tonight, but who do you think are? Well, I don't know. There's a lot of many, many good riders. Uh, if it's that's uh, this year, the, the, the level of freestyle just stepped up crazy. Uh, they're all really good. I've seen uh, Levi Sherwood with uh, bringing the double flip as a, a normal tricks now. Uh, Clinton Moore and Josh Sheehan just strong and consistent as always. So it's going to be a uh, seriously uh, a crazy battle tonight. We have Christian Meyer as well, who's a new rider tonight. In qualifying, he really impressed and he was very daring. He's full of energy. What do you make of him? Well, I just want to talk to him and uh, he really impressed me during qualifying. We, no one really expected what is what we saw from him and uh, he just uh, reminded me uh, my brother back in the day when we started freestyle, he's just crazy, living for freestyle, living for the public and I think tonight is going to be fun to watch him. A word on Levi Sherwood because he actually top qualifying earlier. Uh, he shed lots of weight off his bike and off himself. Is that an area of the sport that people need to focus on now is the development of the bike? That can be something because, uh, you know, uh, that's something that I'm, I did to my bike as well when just uh, trying to get some weight. So uh, the bike is actually lighter and lightness makes your bike more powerful. So that's, uh, that's a good deal. So that's probably the future of Fusha. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, this is the house that Danny built. Danny Torres, a legend here, and everybody loves Danny Torres. And I do believe that he is down there in the pits with our Novilleros. We got two guys who are new to the scene here at the Red Bull X Fighters. One of them is Fred Kirilos, and the other one is a kid named Christian Meyer. Now there you see Danny Torres and Christian Meyer in the background, who you just heard Lindsay ask Tom about, and we saw him go crazy the other day with some actual madness in the qualification round. It was unbelievable. Yeah, Christian really came out and threw down, and we were all so surprised. And there's Fred Kirilos, and uh, let's take a look at these two guys in a little bit more depth. I'm Fred Kirillos, I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm Christian Meyer, I'm from Spain. I'm here in Red Bull X Fighters Madrid because the committee of Red Bull X Fighters chose me. I was the one chosen by the fans. I was six years old when I came to the first Red Bull X Fighters. I never forget, you know, that moment. I think it's a dream for all the freestyle riders all over the world and I'm gonna make the best of it, for sure. I came here to win. All right, there you see him, the man we just heard from, Christian Meyer, the local Spanish rider who dazzled us and everybody else here in his qualifying run. I think we're actually going to get a peek at his qualifying run, if I'm not mistaken here, Troy, and we can see how he threw down. I mean, came out of the gate with a double backflip. None of us knew he had that in his bag. Well, yeah, and the thing is, is that we actually had to run the qualification this morning super early. So these guys were all up at 4.30 in the morning to be able to run the qualification at 7 o'clock after a bit of training. Oh. And you see here on that double backflip attempt that he absolutely canned it. And uh, he was hurting after that one, but a couple of words from his mom. He got back out there, went for a second qualification run, and pulled out a pretty decent run. But you can tell he's a little bit inexperienced. He only had four jumps in regulation time. Yeah, I think he's getting used to just this format here at X-Fighters. But look, some really great tricks. We saw the Cali roll a little earlier there. Nice KOD there, and then he gives us a little bit of a pose there up on top, and he's hoping to do that tonight at the <laughs> yeah. end of the night. Yeah. All right, well, Christian Meyer is with Lindsey Hooper in the Ryder Paddocks, and we're going to hear from both of them right now. Christian, this is your first Red Bull X Fighters in Madrid. You're a Spanish boy. What does it mean to you? It's mean a lot. It's mean I have to be 100%. It's mean I have to, I have to do it the best I can. 
in qualification, you really won a lot of admirers. You're very brave and daring. Is that going to be the same here tonight? Yeah, I have more surprise than in the quali, so I'm going to try to do my best and try to, to get up everyone for the seats. Seat. Tom Pages has said to us that he's really excited by you being oh, yeah. a great freestyler for the future. Is, is he one of your idols? Tom Pages is the best rider in the world at the moment. He's awesome and I'm, I'm sad he's not riding, but, uh, but next year he will be here, so I'm happy for that too, you know. So are you pleased to hear praise from him? Yeah, praise for him and Tom, you're the best, everyone know that. And, and it's next time, man. Well, Christian said that he wants to please the audience here in Madrid, but he's also going to have to please our panel of judges. And he's also going to have to figure out how the rules and format work here. Let's take a look at that right now. Twelve of the best freestyle motocross riders on the planet are competing here tonight. In the first round, they pair into three groups of four riders. The fun part, the riders have to pick one of four old school tricks and execute it in their run. The top six riders meet in the semi-finals in three head-to-head -head duels. No limits, this time they can showcase the very best of their repertoire. Three winners go to the final where each rider has got 75 seconds for his run. The goal of each run, convince the five judges using the criteria difficulty, variety, execution, use of track and energy. The rider taking the most categories will be crowned the 2017 Red Bull X Fighters champion. Well, one of the really cool things here at Red Bull X Fighters is that this unique judging system really helps narrow down to the right winner almost, almost better than any other system I've ever seen, actually. So what we have here, we have Edgar Torrenteras. He is the man of freestyle motocross, Spanish guy that has been doing this since the 90s. He is judging energy. Of course he's judging energy. He is the king of energy. We have Daniel Bodine right beside him in the hat, right in the Red Bull hat. He is a freestyle snowmobile rider, owner of the longest backflip on a snowmobile. Degree of difficulty is what he is judging, and who better to do it than him? Next to him, Matt Rabot. The, he is the man, <laughs> champion. He's won this thing as a World Tour champion. He's won more points in this event than anybody ever has. He's got execution. Andreu Lecondegui. Mountain bike extraordinaire. He is judging variety. Are these guys doing flip tricks? Are they doing right side up tricks? Varials, hitting the quarter pipes. Right side up, upside down, what are they doing? He's got to make sure they're doing all of it. Ronnie Renner, there on the left. Everybody's favorite clown on tour. <laughs> Everybody loves Renner. 100 time X Games gold medalist in step up, and he's even got a Red Bull X Fighters win to his name. 100 times, wow. Maybe 100 times. <laughs> but he's also our head judge. Any ties out there from the judges, he is going to have to break that tie, which is a hard position to be in. Absolutely. Wouldn't want to be there. Glad I'm up here with you, Andy Bell. Yes, I, it's much easier sitting up here. <laughs> all right, well, these guys are all out there training right now, and you can see them flying through the air, and you got to know you have to have the confidence and the skills to be able to do this because there's a lot of danger in this sport, and the fear plays a big factor. So let's go and find out what it takes to win and where the fear factor plays a role. They are the best riders in the world. They can easily win any other competition, but to win in Madrid, every rider has to leave his comfort zone. Madrid, you've got to just go all out. You definitely have to go out of your comfort zone. We have to do some crazy tricks. Many of the riders have one trick they love and hate at the same time. They love it because the fans like it and the judges reward it. They hate it because they risk so much every time they perform it. For Josh Sheehan, it's the double backflip. It's my scariest trick. It just never gets easier. Just because you're confident with it doesn't mean it's not scary. So it's the best feeling when you do land it, but yeah, it's a tough one. Taka Higashino, the rock solid backflip. I want to step up a little bit, you know, so I fight my fifth. So I can do that crazy trick. 
For Clinton Moore, it's the Bundy. I guess, yeah, we all have that one trick that we all stress on and we kind of want to make sure we get it right. You know, risk it for the biscuit or risk it to be last. And Levi Sherwoods is the ruler flip. The sport's crazy. Every single year we look back and we just think, what's next? What's coming next? You know, we're constantly doing stuff that really scares us before we go out there and then, um, you know, the next year that that just becomes normal. Whoever wins here tonight has also overcome themselves. All right, so about 20 minutes ago to greet the audience here in Madrid, in Las Ventas, we had MotoGP racer and legend here from Spain, Danny Pedrosa. He came out on his bike and had a lap around inside the arena and I was kind of scared that he was going to maybe try and go for a jump. And this was filmed a little while ago as they introduced Danny Pedrosa to the audience here. And they just went bananas. It was really fun to watch from our position on high here. And you can see and hear this beast of a bike as he was rolling around the arena here. Well, it's pretty cool to have MotoGP royalty here yeah. at Red Bull X Fighters. The guy Absolutely. has 30 MotoGP wins under his belt. Unbelievable. And two 250 class championships. He doesn't get any better than that. That's Absolutely. fighting against guys like Rossi. So this guy, he is just royalty to have here. So cool to have him ride that bike around. I'm scared he might dump it there. It's kind of a little slick on those yeah. slick tires. Well, yeah, he had, uh, he had pretty slick tires out there, and he also launched our rocket to open the show for our live audience here in the arena, which was a pretty special thing for us and for the audience here as well. And like I said, they went bananas when he had a loop around the arena. It was really great. So we were lucky enough to have Danny Pedrosa here earlier on, and now he is with Lindsey Hooper, our sideline reporter, in the pits, and we're going to hear from him right now. Danny, was it a special moment to open the show today? Yeah, of course. Uh, amazing to be sharing the, this stadium. Uh, the, the people is so close, so they can hear the noise of the bike, and you know I can see them all very, very close, and it was amazing to to be around uh, around the stadium. Uh, it, obviously, it's difficult with uh, with that bike to be to do certain things. Unfortunately, the the the, um, the ground was a bit wet, but you know it was good for the for the fans. Are you a fan of freestyle motocross? Uh, since I'm a kid. Unfortunately, I cannot practice, but uh, I'm always watching uh, anytime I can uh, the, the the highlights of the jumps and uh, what these people are able to do today is is just amazing. No words. Yes. How talented are they, and who do you think is going to win? I don't know who is going to win. I just uh, really cross my fingers for nobody to get to get hurt because you know it's, it's never it's, it's, they, they risk a lot. So I, I really can see the the ramps are big, uh, but you know good show and good entertainment is is the main thing for me today. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. What a treat. Danny Pedrosa in the house. All right, Andy. We are just about ready to throw Group A, which has Josh Ian, Michael Malero, Taka Higashino, and Harry Bink into the mix here. Before we do, though, I want to talk a little bit about this course that we've got out here in Madrid. We've got eight ramps that the guys are going to be jumping off of, including a super kicker, the double back ramp, two quarter pipes. Talk a little bit about this track here and, and what these guys need to be able to do. Well, first of all, hats off to the track crew. I mean, we were underwater three hours ago. Yeah, we were. It's incredible that we were talking about canceling the show, and now the track is the best condition I've ever seen it in. So so these, these guys are really going to have a perfect track to ride, and it, it looks like we're getting right into it here. Yeah, we're going straight into it, so it looks like it's going to be... Uh, oh, I can't see. I think that's Harry Bink that just had a loop around there. Here's what it is in this first round. It's called the Quadrillas Elimination Round. There's three groups of four riders. From each group, two riders will advance to our semi-final round where we will have head-to-head -head battles. Now, in this Quadrillas Elimination Round that we're going to see right now, the time is 60 seconds. We'll see Group A ride first, which contains Josh Sheehan, Michael Malero, Taka Higashino, and Harry Bink, which you just saw. And these guys will have to do well enough in their group so that they're one of the two top positions to move to the next round. And it's going to be a tough battle for these guys. Well, the crazy thing for me is to look at this. We're in the first round, the quadrillos, and looking at the rundown of those four guys, this could be a semifinal yeah, at any other event. I mean, we have... Taka and Sheehan and Malero and Harry Bink. I mean, this is 
We're starting off big. This is a big group, and it's going to be one of the biggest guys out there, Josh Sheehan. Oh, no, excuse me, it's going to be Harry Bink. They mixed up the, the, the running order on us a bit, so Harry Bink will get his time started in one second. Here we go, he's on. All right, so that is a 110-foot ramp coming right out of the tunnel. Starts it off with a big combo. And talking to a few of the guys earlier, they said that ramp is a little bit slippery and a little bit kicky. Well, after so, all that mud being <laughs> packed in there from the trainings earlier on, I'm not surprised. Uh, now, so, there's the Flintstone. That is the old school trick that Harry Bink chose for this round. So we know he's got it in there. Now he can relax into the rest of the run. <laughs> relax by just doing backflip combos <laughs> and front flips and all the other stuff going on. Yeah, it should yeah. be easy. No I got problem, that Flintstone here. out of the way. Big KOD backflip. Really nice extension out of Harry. And that ramp there, there's two things going on. This landing is so tall. These guys are getting less air time because the landing is so tall. They actually have to over jump a little bit. As we see down in the right hand corner of your screen, the clock is ticking down to zero. As long as he's in the tunnel, zero is fine. And that's a double grab backflip to finish off his run. Buttery smooth landing as well. Yeah, nice, nice landing. So, you know, we, I was talking to Renner earlier. As the clock hits zero, the guys have to be inside the tunnel. The front wheel has to be into the tunnel in, in order, order for, for the rat jump to count. And so, Harry, uh, Harry Bink got, I think, four or five jumps in that 60 second run there. So, it's a difficult thing to have only 60 seconds here because there's a lot of travel that you got to do in order to get to the positions you need to be in. There's a nice flip combo, the clicker to Superman to start. And then going back, Clifford had adopted there about 1999. And then looks through, gets great extension on the kiss of death backflip. And we're gonna talk a lot about this. These guys are all so good these days. Everything has to be perfect. Double grab flip, which is one of the more difficult flip tricks, if not the most difficult flip trick, but He's got three or four other guys doing that exact trick in this group of 12. Yeah. So he's got to hold it, he's got to extend perfectly, and he's got to come around and make sure he lands both wheels down at the same time. Be quick, be fast, be in control, and be stylish all the while, all the while hanging it out upside down. And what I meant to say earlier on, he can relax and breathe a little bit easy <laughs> now that he's got his, uh, his old school trick out of the way. If the guys have a plan in mind and they have to slip in an old school trick in the last second, that's going to interrupt that plan. So what I meant was getting that old school trick out of the way and being able to focus on the rest of the run, not making out that uh, the run that they're doing is super simple or something. All right, next rider up is Takahigashino from Japan. This guy's a fantastic rider. He's got that double grab, flip, rock solid combo, which is super amazing. I like to see what this guy's got well, for us here. And Tuck has won one of these before. That's so, right. as well as X Games Best Trick and a lot of other stuff. So, starts off the rock solid flip over the 110 foot jump to start off. The judges love when you start off with a big trick. They love it. He hit the timing perfectly. He didn't burn any time off the clock. So, coming through, 45 seconds left. And then right into the Cali roll. Talk is the one that brought the Cali roll to the scene, so he has it perfected. He does it nice and loose. You're gonna see a bunch of different variations of that trick here tonight. I personally think Talk has got it the most dialed. Now, we saw that trick, the rock solid upside down. He gets that old school trick check mark. He's done with it, does it right side up. And then, first time on the oh, quarter fight tonight yeah. by Taka. Remember, our use of course, that is 20% of your mark here tonight. You need to use as much of this track as you can. Oh, nice. Big kiss, kiss of death. Big kiss of death, flip to finish off. And he really hung that thing out there for a long time. Brought it around just in time. I think he might have nose wheelie down the landing. But a really solid run for Taka. <laughs> hey, the audience we're judging here on, loving him. If we're judging on dance moves, I think Taka's got Bink covered right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kind of agree with you on that one. All right, let's take a look back here. Starting off, double grab, then rock solid, 
Extends it back out. He didn't cheat it and keep his elbows bent. He extended it away from him. Really great. And then there is the Cali roll. Yuaji takes off, grabs that left hand C grab, and then spins around 360. There's his old school trick. The rock solid right side up this time. And then nice on the flare. He, he gets nice and flat on the spin. Didn't have huge amplitude, but he still, I feel, was big enough to yeah. make it look good. He had plenty of rotation in there well and got the bike in the right position. And you're right on that one. He knows really that yeah, landing. Yeah, knows really did. So yeah, very nice, uh, very great run. Yeah. Out of Taka, we're gonna have to see. Remember, you only have to get top two in this to move on, but hey, with Sheehan and Malero coming up, well, that's Michael, gonna be tough. Michael Malero, the prodigy of Danny Torres, has been such a fantastically solid, stable, consistent rider for the last three years. He's never really made an explosion on the Red Bull X Fighters, but he did beat his mentor one year, and that put him really on the map as far as taking the next step to stardom. So Michael Malero from Spain, another local boy looking to really do some damage here in this Quadrillas round. Well, I think the crowd have adopted him almost as much as Danny Torres. I mean, Danny Torres is the man here, but Malero over the last four years has just come on strong. We're gonna see what he brings here. Big double grab flip, a little over-rotated on the landing. I went pretty long there. I mean, he's such a little guy yeah. that it doesn't take much, uh, much horsepower to just propel him over these jumps. And he spent a lot of time in these bull rings, so he's very comfortable. Comes back around. There's the Cali roll to one-handed lander. Oh, yeah, nice, and a good landing, too. I thought he was a little far back, but he, he got it. You know, collected it up and, and landed nicely. We're gonna have to look that through in slow mo, but he just he rotated so quickly. He was back on the bike before he was halfway through the ramp. And there's that rock solid. It's his old school trick. That's the choice of most of the guys. I think only two guys have gone with a, alternate tricks. And there we go. Oh no! Oh, oh, no! Michael! He dropped his hand off of there. That's gonna kill his time. Uh, he's gotta get into that tunnel. He's gotta hurry. Oh, that's, that's gonna, gonna be gonna close. Be, that's close. We're gonna have to wait for Ronnie Renner's call to see if this jump counts. This is gonna count. Okay. We just got word from Renner. It's official, this one counts. So he can actually take a second back here and collect his thoughts. Yeah, he's gonna need to to make sure everything's good to go because this is a, a really difficult one for him. Oh. Michael Malero. Oh, oh my goodness. No oh. hand and front flip out of Malero. No oh. hand and front flip. Unbelievable. Wow. The crowd is going on here. After wow. slipping a hand off of the flare and crashing, he comes back strong with that front flip no-hander. Well, it's it's crazy what the job the judges have right now. Yes, he crashed a little bit, but he had huge amplitude on yeah. that flare. That's the best I've ever seen Malero that hit was that. Huge. It was huge. Twice as high as Taka just was. He did a combo. I couldn't quite catch it since it's on the other side. It looked like maybe a it was a knack -knack, Indian Air think, knack -knack. Yeah. We'll check it out here. Okay, so it starts off huge extension on the double grab. A little over rotated, but and then oh, on his Cali roll. Look at that. He starts off side saddle, which allows him to rotate so quickly and actually have time to get that one-handed lander out. It's also tough to do that trick side saddle because you got no control with your knees to center the bike up. And then let's see. Yeah, so you're right, a knack-knack, big amplitude. Oh, he just slipped his left hand off because he landed a little front wheel high. This is gonna be tough. He's yeah, the that's... only guy out there doing a front flip. But he is using the mechanical ramp, which is an assist, which we'll see here in a minute. So it's not scoring as high as a double backflip, the judges told me. But because he's the only guy doing it. And a no-hander, by the way. And he, throw in, and he threw in the combo. So it's, it's really, really 
difficult out there for the judges it's to see where this is going to fall. It's tough to come back from a crash no matter what you do after that because a crash is very costly as far as the points are concerned as the judges are concerned. So it's going to, yeah, you're absolutely right. Tough job for the judges, and I think that uh, probably Michael Malero is going to be quaking in his boots to see what the other guys do in this group. But right now we're just waiting on Josh Sheehan do his run I'm excited to see how he comes down his parents are in the house as well yeah we were sitting uh, in the in the lunchroom with them earlier on today as we watched the rain fall down in buckets looking forward to seeing Sheedy's run here well Josh had a solid qualifying run came out third uh, he had a little mistake in his second run where the judges seemed to be scoring a little higher in the second run to qualifying so he ended up third pretty solid place to sit and he's gonna get started here right on time and, and starts off big. The 110, two-handed grab, double grab over the big dog. Massive. Extends it nicely. And something that you mentioned to me very often about uh, Josh is that he is one of the most consistent riders in the group of riders that are out there these days. I do feel so. Josh is just, he is so, I mean, I hate to say rock solid, but he's so <laughs> rock solid in his riding. He's nailed more double backflips than anyone in history. Speaking of double backflips. Here it comes. Yes. Oh, absolutely perfect as we get a shot of his parents there in the crowd. But how nice to get that off his back and then right into the flare. And I mean, to go double backflip flare. And he's got a ton of time to get probably one, two more jumps really? if he's quick about it. Yeah, I agree. Great line choice there for Josh. I really like that. He got him two tricks at one, and then he does the 360 back to finish off. And Josh yep. Sheehan. That was great a stellar run. run. Nails on the use, of course. They get the quarter pipe in there, get the super kicker in there. Gets the highest degree of difficulty because of the double backflip. It's the hardest trick being done here tonight. Yeah. And we know he has a couple variations of that for later on. And the danger factor with the double backflip is also immensely, immensely high because one small mistake, a slip up on the throttle, you know, a small shake on the on the launch ramp, and you could really put the whole thing off. So uh, kudos to him for being so consistent with that. And, and look at that, fantastic. just looking for the landing. Yeah. Just absolutely butters that landing and then right into i mean it's skateboarding he would have covered a lot of boards right there that was a yeah. long that was long a long flare. flare it wasn't super high i've but seen it was better long. i've seen better flares from josh and i'll be honest with you on that one and then finishes up with a 360 which is the first one we've seen tonight so the variety judges really gonna like that run as well yeah all right well let's see who our top two in this first group a they're just doing the calculations for Josh Sheehan's run. He's still in staged mode here. The judges, I mean, they're going to have the toughest job at, of anybody here this night, except for maybe the track builders, you know, to get these guys their points and to make sure that the points are distributed fairly. So first group, remember, it's the top two riders from each group. Moving on to the next round. Round one, group A, it's going to be, let's see, Josh Sheehan and Takahigashino. So there you go. We have our first two riders going to the semifinal. And Malero smiling, but I don't think he's happy. Yeah, he knew he knew that that crash was going to cost him big yeah. time. I mean, unfortunately, everybody is way too good to have any type of mistake, especially, I mean, dabbing a foot may finish your run, never mind landing on your face. <laughs> <laughs> That's too bad. Yeah. It's too bad because Michael had an excellent run. Yeah, he really and is did. He's throwing that front flip out here. But we still have two more riders for the hometown crowd to be cheering for here. And Danny Torres and Christian Meyer. Well, Danny Torres is going to come out in the next group, Group B, which also includes Clinton Moore, Adam Jones, and Rob Adelberg. And it appears as though Danny Torres will be the first guy to ride in that Group B. Torres not having a Danny Torres type run in qualifying. He just just looked a little off, which we never see. I mean, Danny is almost like a robot out there, usually. He's so perfect, nails everything so perfectly, but 
once again, the guys had to wake up at about 4.30 this morning yeah. to ride, and there's guys hugging double backflips before the sun was up. Well, we should explain, too, that normally the qualification round is done the day before we have the final event day, and uh, the reason behind that is so that we can seed our round one list of riders in the, in this case, the Quadrillas elimination. And again, you know, having to get up so early this morning to come in and do that qualification round was just a big stress on these riders. So, you know, props to them for, for being pros and, and just continuing to battle through the fatigue and the interviews and all the things that they have to do as part of their pro life here and then come out and put on a contest and a show like this well, in the evening. It, it's so tough. People don't re don't think about it. I mean, these guys have jet lag for days. I mean, I feel terrible, and I've only been here a day and a half, and all I have to do is sit up in this booth, and I feel terrible. So you couldn't imagine flying from Australia or America or Japan, wherever everyone's coming from. Get on a motorcycle, ride. Your sleep schedule is messed up. You're not eating your home food. Everything is different here. And we're higher than a lot of guys ride, too. Our elevation's a little bit. We're somewhere around 800 meters. So, you know, the bikes run differently. And then they got to come out here and perform against the world's best. All right, well, Danny Torres is definitely one of the world's best. This is his house. It remains his house. Let's see how he does. Oh, man. Like four, four out of five guys have started with that double grab backflip. Not long ago, that was winning X Games' best trick. Yeah. Now it's the start of a run on a 110-foot jump. Absolutely insane. Lazy Boy backflip. Danny, one of the best practitioners of that trick. He really gets back, gets his helmet towards the back fender. He's struggling a little bit with that corner. I mean, it's so tight to get around in those tunnels. There's his old school trick, the rock solid. As I said, most of the guys opting for the rock solid. And then he comes around. Oh, are we Danny Torres hitting the quarter pipe? Oh. Not something that we ever see, but kudos to Danny yeah. for learning that. And we've been waiting for it for the last three years. Yeah, longer, in fact. He's been talking about it for a <laughs> while, and I think he did attempt it last year, but this year it looks good. That's great. Use the course and variety. It's really going to help. And then the executioner flip to finish off. Much better run than we saw this morning. Yes, much better run. I'm really happy for him on that one. Just to put that in perspective, by the way, of the 12 riders, Danny qualified in 11th place this morning in the qualification round. So there you go. Great. Pretty solid extension there. Out of Danny's, he gets started over the big jump. He comes around, here's that lazy boy flip. Full extension, locks the bike up, extends his hands over his head and gets his head back right to the fender. And as you like to say, buttered the landing. Butters the landing. Comes around, it's rock solid. And then really, really good to see Danny a lot of guys have kind of fought the progression a little bit, which I don't blame. I just quit and moved up to the booth <laughs> up here when things started getting crazy. But, you know, really nice to see Danny throwing that out. It's really difficult to be a top five guy these days without especially, some of that I stuff. Mean, you know, Danny's still young, but he's no spring chicken if you compare him to the age of, uh, of the other Christian riders. Meyer, that are, you know, Christian Meyer, 20 years 20 old. Years old. <laughs> Um, so, you know, being able to continue to step up his game and continue to perform and be relevant is well, and, uh, a big job. And Danny's had more starts than anybody in X-Fighter history, 46. 46. Yeah. And that's almost double of everybody else. I mean, he yeah. knows X-Fighter's competition like nobody else. So great to see him added to his repertoire of tricks right there. So and good to see him shake those jitters from this morning. He must have had a good nap. Yeah, definitely. All right, coming up next, one of my favorite riders, Rob Adelberg. Now, I love this guy because he just extends his trick so beautifully. Starts off big with a wow. cliffhanger flip. That was mega. Really nice extension, goes a little bit long. Guys are kind of struggling with that one because you come out of the tunnel and you're not, you don't ever get to the arena. You're on the ramp in the tunnel. It's probably the most petrifying jump out here for sure. You just don't have time to 
to just get your bearings and you're already in the air. So the guys hitting it and going big right away with the big tricks is awesome. KOD backflip on that one ramp there. That, that one's the one that's not giving them a lot of pop. I think they propped it up a little bit here since qualifying, but. Yeah, and you'll also notice that these guys were struggling a bit in the tunnels with all that mud and dirt that's been going back with them. It's Cali slippery, roll. and now we got a Cali roll, nice. Really good, time clicks down, but this one is gonna count. So good job to Adelberg for hustling up, getting back there. This, now this, he can take a breath. This has there. to be his old school trick because I didn't see the rock solid in his run. Interesting, he didn't Engine do his there. old school trick. I think I saw, that. I, I saw it Did over here. Did he do here? it? Yeah. Okay, and then I missed it. I'm glad you're up here with me, buddy. Uh, I got you covered, Troy. So Adelberg finishes up with a big flip combo at the end there. And he looks happy with his run. I mean, Everything looked perfect. Uh, we're just kind of missing, we're, we're missing the quarter pipe in there. Obviously, to be in that next tier of riders where the guys are right now, it seems like you need the double flip, you need a front flip, and you definitely need a flare to get that score going. Well, he's got a, um, a Cali roll as well. Yeah. Let's look at this. Oh yeah, you're right, okay. he did it right there, nice. Hey, really nice rock solid too. Yeah, like I said, Rob Adelberg with great extension, commits to the run every single time. Yeah. Love the look through there on the kiss of death backflip. And then here's that Cali roll. Perfectly executed yeah, there. I really mean, nice. I, uh, that's a toss up between him and Taka. And he gets the Indian air to heel clicker. And he gets the full heel clicker too which a lot of guys kind of cheat through that last part of that. And well, I think that's because they're doing the heel clicker first and trying to kick it back to the Indy or the Superman flip. Yeah, so I'd rather I like see it his that way. Better, I like going yeah. that way personally as well. We'll see what the judges think. There's our uh, one of our young guns, Luke Ackerman, who slotted into the empty spot that was left for Tom uh, by Tom Pages. So Luke Ackerman from uh, Germany will be riding a little bit later on in group number C. He's trying to get his wings right now. Yeah. You notice that uh, Rob Adelberg just dropped the mouth guard out of his uh, mouth there. A lot of people are saying to me uh, a while back, well, why are these guys wearing mouth guards? It's not like they're gonna get hit in the face with a stick or a puck or a punch or something like that. And uh, what a lot of people don't realize mouth guards do is they help prevent concussions because when a guy crashes and his head hits the ground, very often the shake of the brain inside the head, of course, is a, one of the parts of, the part, parts of a concussion, but it's when the jaw snaps together that really solidifies that concussion. So a mouth guard helps prevent concussions, and that's why they're wearing just yeah. a little bit of information for all you trivia buffs out there. And now our next rider up, Adam Jones, another one of my favorites. Now Adam's coming off maybe the best run I've ever seen him do this morning in qualifying. Just so smooth, big tricks. I mean, Adam absolutely killed it this morning. So I hope he carries that momentum in here. The only, the, the thing I love about Adam is he's he's the old guard here. It's crazy yeah, he really when I is. started, he was a 16 year old kid. Now he's like the, he's like the old guard here as he comes out, double grab flip. Absolutely perfect. perfect. And he gets up a little bit further into a heart attack position than any of the other guys as well, like scorpions it out. And he's so smooth out there. Love watching Adam ride. Well, that's one of those things that experience will get you, smoothness, and then you no bar check on that no-hander lander, by the way. Uh, a lot going on in yeah. that combo. We'll walk it through in the slow boats, but at McMets to no-handed lander, no-handed bar hop to McMets to no-handed lander. That big, big cliffhanger flip. Wow, another beautiful one. And Adam's line is looking pretty solid here. He may get one more if he hustles up. 15 seconds to get out of this tunnel, jump, and maybe get into another tunnel if he's smart about it. There's the rock solid. All right. And Come on, buddy, he... five seconds, you can do it. I think he's gonna make it, yep, that looks this'll good. Count. This'll count, this'll count, right. sure. Good job, Adam. Focus there in his eyes. You know he's got something big coming up. Finish off on the 110 footer. Time is at zero. 
And the dead body flip. Wow. Hey, that, that was another great run. Uh, it was a picture perfect run. Yeah, and the people are on their feet. Yeah, that, like was, that was big. I mean, yeah. no one else is doing that dead body flip here. Not over that's 110. Good, hey, that, that's good extension for a right side up dead body. <laughs> Never mind being upside down. Yeah. And he really, I think he thought this run out a little bit uh, as well because his connection from ramp to ramp was really good. He didn't have too much wasted time out there. So I liked how efficient he was on course. There we go. Okay, check it out. No handed bar hop, two McMets, no bar check, no handed lander. That is a lot going on. And then wow. absolutely stretches the cliffhanger flip. I like to get picky about that trick, not because I do it well, but because a lot of guys cheat it. But Adam stretched it right out, straight to the knees, straight to the hips. And he did it on a really tough ramp as yeah. well. And then there's a dead body flip, just stretches it out as far as physically possible, and then nails the landing. I mean, yeah, I, I think mean, we're going to see a great score on Adam. Technically speaking, that was a flawless run from, from it Adam. Was. The only thing that the judges are going to be able to knock against, be able to knock against Adam is the fact that he didn't use a quarter pipe. That's that's it, and that's you know what he just kind of made a decision. He's like, but I'm he happy does with have the way. A flare, doesn't he? He does have one. I don't know. He, we talk about that upright, upright, really strange flare style of his. All right, Clinton Moore up next. One of our favorites here this weekend. Clinton qualified second, so he had a great run this morning. It starts off with a bolt. <laughs> that, oh my god. I'm not sure if that or the Bundy is the biggest, scariest trick in his repertoire, but I was talking with his mechanic earlier, he's like, yeah. Clint never practiced that trick. He only does it in shows. That's how scary it is. He nails out his rock solid. And it's got to just feel so good to get that gnarly trick out of the way right away. But the problem for Clinton is he's got a couple of those in his, yeah, <laughs> in his he trick list that. here. And I'm sure the Bundy's going to be coming out soon. Kiss the death flip. Good solid extension. I mean, everybody has really, really got their execution game. The alley point. flair. That's strange. That was inside out. Like he rolls that a We're really just, different way. I, I like uh, that. I a think lot. what Clinton does with his flares is he's just got a much more upper, upright style than some of the guys. But he really had. Oh, oh no, no! The Bundy was supposed to come there. Oh. And he, he knows he made a big mistake there. I wonder uh, what no, happened. Clinton, he had it dialed. What a run. And then a very uncharacteristic dead sailor out of him. Yeah. I'm, you know I'd what? be curious to know what happened in that one. Well, he was saying earlier he's not liking how slippery that 110-foot ramp is, and it's got a little bit of an extra kick. So there's the bolt, the 360-degree body varial not touching the bike which is a little bit different than the Cali roll. And look at that. Lots of time to get the bike back straight. Adjusting all his flip levers. Again, the extension, fantastic. And everything, you know, from this run, more or less, looked really good. You know, you're absolutely right. It's a normal flare rotating to the normal direction, but it just, for, for some reason, it looked kind of funky, and you can see right there, he knows exactly ah. what happened, Oh, that sucks. Clinton was looking so good. All right, still an excellent run. Yeah. But missing that last trick is going to cost oh, him Oh, that's going to cost big, unfortunately, for him. I mean, he still should score well, but... It's tough if you miss one trick out here, you're pretty much done. Well, he's got to get better than an 84.5 if he wants to be one of the top two. So let's see if the rest of his run was good enough in the eyes of the judges to be able to make that work. But missing that big trick at the end, I think that's going to cost him a shot. 
which would mean we've got a bit of an upset going on here. One of our favorites is uh, already not making it to the semifinals. So let's see. So Adam Jones and Danny Torres moving on to the next round. Wow. And that means Rob Adelberg and Clinton Moore, our two Aussies, are out of the mix. Wow. That is a massive shakeup. It is. From this morning, where Moore looked almost unbeatable, and Danny was struggling to just land the jumps in the right place. And yeah. he came back swinging, and Adam just put down one of the best runs I've ever seen him do to flawless. move on it was flawless. to the semis. All right, Group C is now on course. Group C contains Levi Sherwood, Christian Meyer, Luke Ackerman, and Fred Kirillos. Christian Meyer and Fred Kirillos, if you remember at the opening of our show, are our Novieros, the new guys that are mixing into the Red Bull X Fighters to try and earn their stripes. And Fred Kirillos from Brazil will be the first rider in Group C to hit the course. Now Fred's a big boy, wrestles at 450 around like it's at 125. <laughs> and Fred's coming off of what I think is best result ever, I think, at uh, Nitro Games a couple weeks ago. I think he got a second, so. Cool to see him out here for his first time oh. in the bull rings of Madrid and just the I mean, pressure. The pressure, dead sailor on a backflip, no combination off that hey, at all. But he can't, he can't stop right now because you know what, in his group, he's got Meyer and Ackerman, two other yeah. young, relatively inexperienced in, in x fighter competition riders. So, whoa, he grabs a big handful there on landing, but he's just got to put his head down, forget about that, not let it get in his head. Yeah. And there's still a good chance he only needs to get second to move on. That's right. And I think it's wide open for him. Oh, no foot can backflip there. 15 seconds left, and this could be his last hit, unfortunately. I think so. And if I if I remember correctly, oh no, it doesn't look like he's gonna have the run up for the super kicker use of course wise. Oh, and he the just rock got his rock just solid got it in. in. There, yeah. That would have been a 10 point deduction for him if he didn't get that trick in. So yeah. good thinking, he saved it, but bummer with the dead sailor. Uh, right there, he wanted to reach back. I think he was looking to go for a Superman C grab, but uh, he just didn't get the grab, didn't feel confident about it. Right there though, really nice. Kiss of death backflip tsunami. I like that one quite a lot. All right, there's the no foot of can flip there. Really nice, perfectly executed. And then just as the buzzer beater there, the rock solid. All right, so it looks like it's gonna be Luke Ackerman as our next rider as he's getting staged as we keep into, or continue watching the slow-mo action from Fred Quiros from Brazil. Adam Jones, he knows he's moving on to the semifinal, and Fred Kirillos probably relieved to have that run done here in the quadrillos round. And now it's going to be Luke Ackerman. Now, Luke Ackerman's an interesting story. This kid's got a lot of potential. He's still young, and uh, a bit of that crazy streak is still in him. But he's got an injury that uh, hampered him for a year, so it's only two years ago. In Munich, he wrecked himself pretty good, so a little bit of experience there on the injury side, but he still comes out strong, and he wants to win, so let's see what he's got in store for us. Well, he's starting off with the, the surfer takeoff, kiss of death backflip, and that wow. is just absolutely insane to me how you can make your bike flip while standing on your seat. And it comes right around for a really nice big flare. No, oh, no, 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 he saved it. it. Oh. He saved it, but he dabbed twice there. That's going to oh. cost him. And it looks like he stalled the bike. No, no, he's still got it going. 
Uh, Luggy's on that Husky with the electric start. Yeah. <laughs> but he saved that probably because he's such a tall guy. And he's a he's a strong kid as well. He's a big boy. He, he fits into that category with Fred and Josh. Oh, my goodness. Cali roll. Cali roll. Fred's taking it all in. Yeah, I mean, he did say he wants to enjoy this experience as much as possible. There's the rock solid. And I don't think we're, I don't think he's gonna make it. Oh yeah, uh, I think that'll count. I don't know, I don't think so, but we'll have to get the call from Renner. Oh, it's gonna count, nice. wow. Nice one, this is a big one for Luke right now. No, oh, no, no! I think he wanted the volt on that. I think he had the volt in his pocket, in his mind, but it just didn't happen for him. So that's two guys in the the round B, or group B and C, who now have had their last trick well, go south on them. Like I said about Fred, he, he needed to not quit because yeah. that always can happen. Exactly, so that could very well mean that Fred has more points than Luke Ackerman here. Let's look at this. Look at that. Up. What insane extension out of that. And to hit that 75 foot ramp, standing on the seat. That's, see as he brings it along. Oh, man, if he was a big, tall, strong kid, he would not have held that on, but man, yeah, he lucked out any, there. If he was any less than 5'11", he wouldn't have had, uh, had a chance on that. Yeah, you know, I think it was uh, a bit of a lack of experience on Luke's side that, you know, he's got those butterflies and it just, the adrenaline pump was too much for him to handle in this run. Well, it's just such a difficult position to be a young guy like Luke, being only your second or third X fighters and then be out there with Levi Sherwood bringing it down your neck yeah. and Josh Sheehan, all these guys, I mean. I'm super impressed with what we saw from him, and he's so young, I think he's got a pretty bright future. Absolutely, and you know what? He also knows that uh, Christian Meyer is in his group, and he saw what Christian Meyer did earlier on in the day. He knows what he's capable of. A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. Well, and I'm really hoping Christian has adjusted his body position a little bit on his double flip. He's just, he's coming around on the second flip, leaned so far forward that two in a row he actually ended up punching himself in the stomach with his triple clamp with his handlebars, so. To be honest with you, if I were him, knowing that the, the trick list that he does have, I would leave it out and just try and get the best run with a couple of higher end tricks and, and get himself a spot there with, with, with potentially Levi Sherwood, who's in this group. Yeah, I agree. He doesn't have to do the double flip, I don't think. In order to move on, if he just nails a run because I, he's had two mistakes yeah, I think from so the too. other two guys. So here we go. But run he started. doesn't care. No, he doesn't care. He's just going oh, for it. No. Oh no! That was a heavy crash. Oh my goodness. The oh, rotation. No. The rotation looked like it started to go sideways. Oh, uh, Christian. Oh, uh, we never, ever, ever want to see that. No, not a chance. And that was a, a pretty heavy hit. Luckily, we have the best team of doctors and medical staff on here, so they're over there. Well, it looks like he's sitting up from our perspective. I can't really tell. They've uh, they've taken the camera off of him, but uh, that was a heavy crash. I mean, we don't see the landing from this side, and our screen basically just saw that, uh, you know, he was twisted. I think he was twisted in the air. His just second came down rotation really hard was on the slow. second rotation, yeah. We've seen some big double backflip crashes here in Madrid before, so. Yeah. All right. He's on his feet. No, they've got him on a stretcher, but uh, really hope he's okay. Oh man, that's just that sucks. Is a I mean, rough just such one a right there. Excited kid that was like so pumped to get out here yeah. and, and show everybody what he had and, and showed us some big stuff in qualifying and training. Yeah. So, you know, and then the 
pressure that puts on Levi, it's one of the most difficult things in our sport is to go out and ride after you just Follow saw one of your friends injury, go down. Really. Um, really, really difficult to do. I think Levi's finding uh, bike parts out there. But yeah, it's so difficult to clear your head after just seeing that happen. So, you know, hopefully Levi takes his minute, takes some deep breaths, clears his head, and then does what we know he can do. I mean, Levi's a pro. He's seen this enough times. He knows what he's got to do, but still, you know, it's it's got to float around in your head a little bit. He just needs to shut it off and do his job, like you say. We're gonna have to uh, change Le Levi's nickname from the kid to. We have to change uh, his name from his nickname from the kid to the mad scientist. I was talking with Levi for a long time the other day about what he's doing with his bike and and you know his his philosophy is 50-50 now, whereas a lot of the guys were doing 90% about getting themselves physically fit and trained and strong, and 10% uh, was about just getting the bike prepared, and, and Levi's got an interesting philosophy. He he talks about more 50-50 and maybe even getting more towards like 90-10. Obviously, you want to be in shape, and uh, you know, you talked to him and said he lost a few kilos, and I talked to him, he takes, he take, he's taken about 16 kilos off the weight of that bike. So what does that, about 35 pounds from a yeah, weight of a, I mean, of a 150 pound bike? That's significant. Yeah, almost 40 pounds off the bike. I mean, it's getting down. And you watch, when you see him ride, the bike moves around differently in the air than one of the full-size bikes. And for him to lose 10 kilos, that's 22 pounds. I mean, you and I have 22 pounds to lose for sure. I didn't know <laughs> Levi had 22 pounds to lose. So yeah, he was already skinny. Yeah, but he looks great. He's fit. He feels good. Yeah. And qualified number one. I mean, he is just. He's, he's on, on it. a tear. He's on it. Look back, KOD backflip, and just watch the motorcycle in the air when it's upside down above him. I mean, it moves so much. Yeah, well, it's so much lighter, and it, you know, he's got to be careful in that respect too, as well, because if he overkicks the bike a bit, it could move too much on the landing. He gets his rock solid out of the way. Gets back into the closed tunnel here. Oh, he's going for the double there here. Go. Back, back. Double, double back. Oh. 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 Back, double back. And wow. And in reality, Levi did not need to do that to move out of this round at all. All he had to do is put down a run. So that just shows how dialed, how dialed he is with these double flips. All right, that's it for his run. They're not going to give him that extra run time into the tunnel. He didn't make it there on time. But hey, what a run from Levi Sherwood. And you know, there's going to be a lot of people in this audience hashtagging Red Bull X Fighters, showing that double back in there. Wow. I think that's just a statement about how confident he is with that trick. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's funny, too, because I was talking to him and he said, I didn't really learn how to do the double backflip on my motorcycle. I learned how to do it on a BMX bike first and then translated it to the motorbike. Levi, just picture perfect execution on all those tricks. Look at that, knack knack in the first flip and then looks back around, comes out a little nose heavy, yeah. but just still. Man. And he just stays in such perfect body position the whole time. And he felt like he knew his rotation was a hair slow. You see him tuck up. If you see him tuck up like that, that speeds up the rotation. If you push the bike away, it'll slow down your rotation. So they have probably about 15 degrees to play with of yeah. like how they land. It's not a lot. Based on body position. All right, so here we go. And we may well see Fred Kirillos moving on to the next round with Levi Sherwood because of the crash from, or the, the dead sailor rather, from Luke Ackerman. Let's see. 
going to come down to the tricks that Luki did compared to Fred. So let's see. And the judges are still deliberating on that run from Levi Sherwood. He's still in stage mode. Sherwood, geez, he just got lucky, I gotta tell you. Oh, man, look, I mean, it just goes to show you, you can't ever stop. Both those guys had small mistakes. Yeah. They weren't big mistakes, but those are the most costly mistakes. Because sometimes it'll just mess with your mental state, and you'll just kind of give up. You're like, oh, there's no way I can win. Well, if everybody else messes up too, yeah. which well, can happen when you got these young guys out there. I mean, very rarely do you see a Clint Moore have what happened to him happen. But these younger guys, it'll happen sometimes. All right, well, the quadrillas elimination round is done and dusted. We now have our lineups for the head-to-heads. We will go to a 75-second format in head-to-head -head action. And I'm just looking at my board here. It says Adam Jones will be up against Takahikashino. Danny Torres and Levi Sherwood. We've seen that battle go down before. And Luke Ackerman and Josh Sheehan will be in a head-to-head -head against each other. Wow, that's a tough one for Luke Ackerman there. All right, taking a look back at some of the best action from our Quadrias elimination round number one here at the Red Bull X Fighters Madrid 2017. There we have Josh Sheehan in his double backflip in this quadrillas round. Incredible action. Amazing. He was pleased by that, absolutely. And there, Danny Torres. He's going to be going up, as I said, against Levi Sherwood in the uh, second pairing in our semifinal round. From the semifinal round, by the way, Three riders, so from the head-to-heads, three riders will go on to the final. And right now, we're going to go down to the paddocks where Lindsay is with Levi Sherwood. Levi, you look pretty happy with that run. Yeah, pretty happy. Um, first round of the night, so just got to go off the program, follow the process, and get to the final. Have you been impressed with your fellow colleagues here? Definitely. Um, every We're qualifying, and I know tonight that I can't hold anything back. You know, I've just got to give it 100% each round. Um, you know, I might have won qualifying, but it was only by a small fraction, so it um, should make for a good final. Brilliant. We can't wait. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, just looking back here at the big knack knack double backflip from Levi Sherwood, tucking it in just to make sure that landing was definitely there. That was a stellar run from Mr. Sherwood. So New Zealand represented well in the house by him. And uh, we're heading back down to the pits where Josh Sheehan is with Lindsay. Congratulations, you're through to the semi-finals. How did it feel out there? Good, uh, you know, it's always nerve-wracking for the first run of the night, but good to get the double flip out of the way, and uh, yeah, just good to be finished. Clean runs, a little bit sticky, bit of sand, you know, sticking to the tyres, slippery in the corners in the tunnels, but yeah, good to, good to be through safe. And more surprises up your sleeve to come? Oh, well, it's, you know, you, you've got to just about bring your best every run with these guys. We can get an extra trick or two in the next couple of runs, so there'll be a little bit more, but yeah, you know, just try and keep everything big and maybe a bit more extension, but yeah, <laughs> nothing new, no new tricks, unfortunately. 
we look forward to seeing you later. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, these guys are all on fire, heading towards what they hope will be a final battle and a position, uh, podium position on the top of the podium. You know, we saw earlier on is uh, one of the favorites is Josh Sheehan, but uh, you know, we're going to talk with another guy who was a favorite, and that is Tom Pages. He is also down with Lindsay once again. Tom, one of the big surprises from the first couple of rounds that we saw was Clinton Moore going out. Were you expecting to see that? No, not at all. I don't know what happened from Clinton. It just uh, seems that uh, with all the rain and humidity, like uh, it's uh, pretty slippery, so it's hard to be uh, exactly perfect on all the tricks. I don't know. I did not expect that from uh, such a, a great rider like this, but uh, we've seen uh, Josh Sheehan so strong as well with a perfect double flip. So, so far, everything going uh, really well for all the riders. Uh, everyone's safe, uh, so looking forward uh, for the rest of the night. You talk about those slippery conditions. I mean, that just adds to what is already a dangerous sport, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. Like, uh, I don't think the public noticed that, but uh, as a rider, I do. Uh, they all the time are uh, blowing uh, the, 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 the sand away from the from the run-up and uh, I think it's slippery because uh, the dirt is uh, it's really wet so the tires are wet and uh, it makes a uh, uh, more difficulty for tonight. Well we hope everyone gets through the round safely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right well the audience is definitely amped up after that quadrillas round and we are going to step into the semi-finals. As you see there on the graphic 75 second time run three heats one rider from each of the three head-to-head -head battles will move on to the final, which means our final will have three people in the first semi-final. Heat number one, Adam Jones against Taga Higashino. It's interesting to see, Andy, how many times that these guys have actually gone head-to-head -head with each other. Adam's been against Talk on numerous occasions, and we've also seen Danny and Levi going head-to-head -head on numerous occasions. Well, this is the veteran crew of Red Bull X Fighters. These guys have done so many events, so they know what tricks each other have. They know what they have to do, but the funny thing is, is I don't feel that Adam ever rides to ride against anybody. He just puts his trick together in the best way yeah. he can, and he doesn't care. He does, he just works it out and just, I mean, he throws down so well, and to see the confidence he's riding with right now and how smooth it is, is just, it's, it bodes well for how he's gonna do here against Taka. All right, well, Adam Jones is staged for his run in the head-to-head -head here. He's the first guy to go, so he'll more or less set the bar for the remainder of the riders and for Taka in this head-to-head -head round here. Remember, it's semi-final action. Only one rider from each of the pairings will move on to the final. So we're aiming for three. Well, now with it being head-to-head, -head, remember, we have five categories being judged. You only have to win three of them. So you don't have to do the gnarliest tricks need to make sure you do a combination of three of the five things perfectly. And we already saw you make a mistake in the run and you could be out. Yeah, starts off, double grab flip. And it looks like he's probably just gonna do this, possibly the same run as before and then add a couple tricks at the end. Yeah, well, he should have the time with 75 seconds, an extra 15 in the run. There it is. The no-handed bar hop to McMetz. You know, I'm not sure if he has a name for that, but going right now, it's actually a no-handed bar hop to McMetz. It's a no-handed lander yeah, there's without a, a bar going on in that. There's a lot. And big cliffhanger flip. Picture perfect so far. Nice and quick. Hustling to get into that ramp. And, yeah. You know, if you, if you hustle like that each time, you may buy yourself an extra ramp. Well, this is the question. If you get one, two extra jumps in there, you're going to get some extra points for it as well. Yeah, and there, I love that. A combination of two really old school tricks into a, a new combo, which is the turntable to late saran wrap. I mean, he's almost on the ground when he pulls that saran wrap up. And then punches out the big KOD backflip at six. Oh, I think he's going to make it. Yeah, yeah, that's he's gonna in count. There. That's gonna count nice. for sure. See that that hustle, every little bit counts. And let's not forget, let's not forget. After this jump here, 
He's going to get a chance to do one more jump. It's going to be the whip in inimitable contest. And basically, it's going to be the best whip. And that, wow, what a yeah, finish. Dead, for body, dead body flip to flow out, it, or to, to finish out. And he's stuffed. I yeah. mean, that really, once again, a picture perfect run. So, like I said, he's going to have one more opportunity here to do the, the whip. It's going to be a best whip contest called the Whip Intimidable. Help me out here. <laughs> I'm, I'm not helping you with that one, buddy. <laughs> That's all you. As we take a look back here, we're getting a. Oh, okay. He's all right, back so in we're the going tunnel. for a whip right now. This is going to be just one hit, one whip per of the six guys. Pretty lazy that one. Yeah. Pretty nice old moto whip there. We're gonna see a couple different styles of whips here. Two or three probably. You got the old school moto whip. We're gonna have some turn downs. Yeah, the big turn down whip and the guys that are really upright and just get that whole body twisted around on the bike. Look at that. The bike twisted around behind them. Noah hand. Bar hop to McMath, which is taking the legs down the outside of the bars, not back through them. And then no handed lander. And the turntable, no hander, two really late saran wrap there. Yeah, really nice combos from Adam Jones. I like them a lot. That one was invented by my old friend Dave Turner way back in the day, the early days of freestyle. And then just stretches that dead body flip out so big. There's nobody that does the dead body like Adam Jones. No, I agree. Whip Inimitable. Whip Inimitable. That's the contest. And that's what's happening after the normal time run. The riders will have one more opportunity to do the whip. And then the whip will be judged as a separate contest and uh, will be awarded at the end. Once the final has been done, we'll find out who won that whip contest. All right, Taka Higashino in the tunnel to start his semi-final run against Adam Jones. Taka's strong today. He's looking real confident. Comes out big. Rock solid backflip starts him off. The crowd seems all fired up all of a sudden here. Yeah. Not that they ever are not fired up. They're basically screaming here for four straight hours. Taka kind of takes a second getting turned around there. But hey, probably because he was going for the Cali roll one-hander. Cali roll fist pump. Yeah, Cali roll fist pump. The Cali roll named a little uh, homage to his adoptive nation of our country. The Rodova. State, oh yeah. The Rodova. Coming up to the quarter pipe. Nice. Really lays that out nice super. and flat. Yeah, super Once again, flat. not huge amplitude, but nice rotation and nice and flat. So I do believe that was a little bit cleaner than the earlier round. Yeah. And he's getting that use of course in as well and variety. So both of those things pretty important. Uh, those KOD flips always scare me. It looks like the bike's never going to get around in time to get under the guy. It's just so freaky to watch. This is it for Taka. Double grab Double Indy grab with a one-hander lander. Oh <laughs> hey, that's throwing it all out there. That's what I like to see when, when the guys get more time. I don't like them just to do the exact run back to back to back. It's yeah. nice to throw in a little bit of variation like that, showcase a few more tricks. All right, so Taka Higashino, his regulation time is done. Now he'll have an opportunity to jump in and throw down the whip. All right, 
Starts off strong here. Really big extension there on that rock solid. And into that Cali roll. He's just got it so dialed. It comes back around. He's got time for the fist pump before he even grabs the bars. Uh, it does look like that uh, Taka isn't going to do the whip. Maybe he's just opting out of it. That's a possibility. Or maybe no. it did. Maybe he forgot. Because yeah, it looked like Adam was forgetting for a second. And then it's a new format here. So sometimes when the guys aren't used to it, they just go back to, yeah. to the mode that they've been doing for so long. And look at how far separated from the bike that he was there. All right, Taka Higashino, Adam Jones, both on the mountain. Now we're going to see the distribution of the helmets. So like you said earlier on, Andy, you only need three helmets in order to move to the final. Will it be Adam Jones or will it be Taka Higashino? Well, and the judges are really deliberating up there. Usually we get scores a little faster, but taking a long time. I was talking to Ronnie Renner earlier. He was telling me because everyone our former current riders, there's a lot of opinions up there, and everyone's being stubborn. <laughs> Weird. I'm just glad to see Renner in the judges' seat. I never would have guessed uh, that. <laughs> Levi Sherwood throws down a little dirt shower for the boys on top of the ramp there. That's funny. And yeah, they got a lot. There, there's just a lot to base this on right now, and. You don't know what the other guy is scoring. You may have an idea of who you think should win overall as a judge, but when you're only in charge of variety or difficulty yeah. or use of force, you don't know where that guy is. You're not marking that, so you don't know where your score is going to put them. Yeah. And that's and what Taka makes the judging still difficult. Staged. It's interesting. It's taking a really long time for the judges to deliberate this one. It's a hard one for them, obviously. Here you go. You get to see Levi having a little bit of fun on the expense of the boys there. <laughs> Boy, they really got the shower. Uh, <laughs> Daka always smiling. He's going to need a brush for that dirt in his hair, though. And well, big grin on Levi's face. All right, so obviously it was really close. It was really close. Let's see how it breaks down with our helmets. So there you go. Energy goes to Adam Jones. Oh, Takahigashino, we're tied up so far. Two go to Adam Jones. He's got the advantage. Oh my goodness, look at this. It's dead even. Renner, he's the tie break here. Oh, uh, Taka Higashino gets it. You know, the crazy thing is, is if Adam would have just hit the quarter pipe, yeah. and even done it not very well, just hit it. it I think Adam had that one. Yeah, that's exactly. all he needed, and that's the thing you only have to use. You only have to win three of these places, or three of these categories, and leaving use of force on the table is a tough one. Taka trying to spray Levi back, but it's just not working for him. <laughs> yeah, he's not getting it. Uh, <laughs> he's giving wow, up. Wow, that was close. <laughs> that was really close. Yeah, it was really close between those two guys. Unbelievably close, in fact. All right, so the next pairing is out. Danny Torres against Levi Sherwood. Danny's house, it's his. He is staged to run. Let's see if he can pull it out. A lot of mental focus from Levi Sherwood as well, making sure that he has everything in his mind set. Danny Torres getting ready to go. He's been here a lot, Andy. He's been yeah, here a lot. He has, and this is a showdown of the 2011 World Tour Champion and the 2012 World Tour Champion. These guys have been at it for a long time. Long time. There we go. 
That's a little far away for us, but maybe Oxecutioner. I thought it was a steep grab indie, but I thought, I, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like you say, it's a little far away. Oh, yeah, little we'll far see in the away. replay yeah. from Toby. C grab flip, anyway, looking solid. There's that lazy boy flip. And you see Danny was over rotating and he just kind of stood up on it yeah, and, and extended and got, and got the rotation to slow down really quickly. Stretches out the flatliner. Liking the new look of, of his bike that Danny's got going on there. It looks really nice. And he comes around for the quarter. The flare. Yeah, he still needs work on that, but he's got it at least. Hey, he's the, got you know, it. He's he did it. I think it. even if Adam just got that that part, I think he had yeah. Taka covered. Yeah. So, you know, it's great for Danny that he's pulling that now. Uh, there's the Executioner flip. So the first one must have been an Indian Air flip. But that's when the judges, the variety judge, starts looking. An Executioner flip and a C-Grab Indy flip are almost identical. Yeah, trick, I mean, so let's give a little more difficulty to the executioner flip, quite honestly, for sure. in fairness. That Cordova flip, and he holds that oh, a long, long time. time. That was really great holding. The building blows up. I mean, everybody loves Danny here, and a, a really solid ride. Yeah, I mean, that's a winning run five years ago. Is it going to be enough tonight? I don't know. Against a guy like Levi Sherwood, it's tough to say. Well, you know, it's up to Levi now to get out there and do his thing, and uh, basically it's it's Levi's to lose. All right, Dan, All right going back so for his whip. Yeah, this is I'm not going to say it. Inimitable. <laughs> the whip, inimitable. So again, this is a, uh, a contest just for the whip. Oh my god. That was hey, amazing. Whip. Digging a hole. All right, let's take a look back here. You're right, Indian Air flip, starting off on the 110. Nice smooth landing, both wheels touching down almost at the same time, and then really stretches out once again. The Lazy Boy flip, it's just such an easy one for guys to cheat on, but yeah. Danny stretches it right out. I mean, there's no halfway with Danny when he when he's on and feeling good. You could tell, and, and everything is like extended and stretched nicely. And the fact that he's got that flare yeah, in there now, big. it's super nice. I'm proud of him. I like yeah. him. And job. I love how I say, oh, all Adam Jones has to do is just do just do a little yeah, flare. Yeah. Come on, Adam. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Easy to sit up here and say. Yeah. And then there, look how long he holds that thing. That's one of the longest I've ever seen him hold, that Cordova flip. You look like Spider-Man yeah. from the movies coming back towards the landing ramp. Really cool. Danny. So much love for him here in this crowd. So fun for them to have a national hero who has been at the top of the game for so long. So long. And we keep coming back to Madrid, which is just, I mean, this is, this is the home of freestyle motocross now. There's Papa Torres, always right by Danny's side, taking care of everything. He's also his mechanic, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. And then here is the man, Levi Sherwood. Could we call him Rubber Man? I mean, Rubber Boy went away. Just Rubber Man? I think he hates that name. We used to call him Gummy. And he was like, guys, please don't call me Gummy. <laughs> I, I like, I, I'm gonna call him a mad scientist because some of the stuff he was telling me he's doing to his bike in order to, to shave weight is pretty incredible. Here we go, Levi Sherwood is on it. All right, well, like we were talking about earlier, just watch that bike move around above him. It is so light now, it is incredible. It, it changed planes like four or five times as he goes around. And then he comes right around. I get nervous. I still get nervous for this chair. Yeah, here we go. Scares me. Back, backflip, double oh, backflip. Oh my god. That was buttery perfect. smooth. 
know, I just, it doesn't even, to be doing double backflips in the middle of a freestyle run. Okay. Just, I mean, she had perfected it, and now Levi is Taking quite it to on another top level. of it. I mean, you know what I have to say? I think that light bike is just, it's helping him rotate quicker and lower than Sheehan has to be on the big 450. But he can't cheat with the uh, with the throttle to try and get a panic rev in there. Oh my God, look at this. He's going for the double ramp again. No handed, no handed double backflip. No back Never, oh. ever has there been two double backflips in a freestyle motocross run. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just witnessed history here at the Red Bull X Fighters in Madrid in 2017. First time ever, two double backflips in a competition run. Both of them done perfectly. And then he finishes off with a half attack backflip. You know, we'll hey. give him a heart attack, why yeah. not? Wow. So the question is now, does he do the whip? I think so, hey? I think so. Why not? I mean, there's a few bucks on the line for the guy that wins the whip contest as well. So hey, Levi's throw got down. Mean, he's got a mean whip and turn down. So oh, <laughs> nice. turn down with an upside nap. You guys have never been good at listening to directions, have they? <laughs> wow. Amazing. Well, so far, I think he's winning the whip contest and everything else, I think, right now. Well, he's got the hearts and minds of the people here in Madrid, that's for sure. Look at that. And just watch his bike in slow motion. Watch it move around when it's upside down. Uh, there's the first one. Check the landing. Point. Like perfect, <laughs> absolutely perfect. I don't, I don't even think a suspension bottom. Wow, unbelievable. I have to say, I, I feel like he's he's got to be six, seven feet lower than Josh Sheehan when he's doing that double. Yeah, and I was just gonna say, you need a lot of amplitude to pull off a double backflip. And you can see how tight he is on the bike. Yeah. He told me he just sets in and, you know, waits for the second rotation to start and spots his landing, and that's exactly what you see. Watch for it here. He's at the zenith of his, his rotation on the first one, and he cocks his head back and You've been dying to say zenith all night, I know, night, I've been wanting you? to say zenith all night. Oh, wait. Long. You know what? That was a straight-up heart attack. I'm <laughs> sorry, Levi. It, it looked a little half from here, but I apologize. That was nice extension. All right, here we go. Sherwood gets the first helmet. Yeah, I don't That's think it's sure. Good. I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be not, tough against not Danny much. Torres here. Rabo, yeah, there you yeah. go. Sherwood's on to the final. Hey, Levi, don't look too excited right now, buddy. Yeah. Oh, he just knows he has two more double backflips to go tonight. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> He's like, hey, oh, it's if a I full don't, pull. yeah, if I don't move on, I mean, that's going to be, it's going to be ten double backflips today. Unbelievable. In competition. In competition. Never mind. Not, yeah, never mind practice, practice. And training. Ten. Unbelievable. All right, our next pairing in the semifinals coming out: Luke Ackerman against Josh Sheehan. Now, there is a phenomenon with Luke Ackerman when he goes up against a guy where you would normally say he's completely outmatched. Somehow. Luke manages to pull it out and do some damage. We saw this in Munich a, a couple of years ago. I think it was 2014 when Jones. Luke Ackerman went up against Tom Pages and advanced because Luke Ackerman didn't have the big tricks that Tom did. But over each of the gaps on the water bridges there, he did little tricks and Tom didn't do that. And Tom made a mistake in his run and Luke Ackerman went on to the final. So, or the semifinal rather. So that was... One of those things that happened, and we see that happening often with Luke Ackerman, the question is, will it happen tonight with Luke Ackerman up against a guy like Josh Sheehan? Luke Ackerman will be the first to ride. Well, Luke has to concentrate on cleaning up the little the little mistake he made on the quarter pipe on his flare. Yes. 
You know that's going to be what he's thinking about because that was his big mistake. And then he came surfer back around and dead sailed his last trick as well. He does a surf for KOD flip again. Yes. I just. I'm blown away by that trick and how he gets that bike to rotate. Well, the funny thing is, is a lot of people don't understand, normally when you're jumping on the bikes, you need your knees or your feet to kind of try and control it. It's not just about the handlebars. And he doesn't have that on the surfer takeoff. Cali roll. Luke. Nice. Nice. Very, very good. Bet that was better than his first run, too. Yes. So, you know, the judges are watching. They're judging you against everybody else, but they're judging you against your level as well. I mean, it also comes into play. So to get better each run is a, is a bonus. Oh, get a stretch Whoa. on that. Oh. Oh. He stuck Whoa. that front wheel in a divot from earlier on and managed to ride it out. Lucky. Man, he went deep there, but still looking really good here, Luke. And I'm not sure what trick he was going for last time that he dead sailed in the end, but. Oh, 360 knack. Yep. Off on the, the super, super kicker. kicker. That's good for use, of course. Absolutely. So time winding down for Luke Ackerman. This will be the last one for him. No flare this time. Interesting. Oh, no, but big heart attack. Oh, and it comes around. Does a flare here, but. That's not going to count, though, because he was out of time, and it's just as well because he caked that one, too. Young Luke Ackerman. Very solid run. Very solid run. I mean, you can see the, you can see the difference sometimes when he, when the veterans ride and these young guys ride. They're a little bit more front wheel high. A little, oh. There's nice our whip. Win. A little more front wheel high, a little more rushed on their tricks yeah. if you compare that to a run of, say, Adam Jones. But he doesn't have the experience yet that these other guys ha have had in the last 15 years. So, Something I want to ask you about, Andy, and I mean, you're in the know about this stuff, because you just heard Luke Ackerman on that Husqvarna, that's big, throaty growl. It's a 454 stroke. So you got two types of bikes out there. You got the 454 stroke and the 252 stroke. What are the advantages and disadvantages between these two bikes? Because when we look at guys like Luke and Josh, who are both riding 454 strokes, they're big, strong boys. They need to be in order to move these bikes around, right? Yeah, I mean, size helps, but then you watch a guy like Danny Torres flip around the 450, yeah, and he does true. it. I, I was always amazed, being a bigger guy myself, I was always amazed at these little guys that were manhandling the big bikes. I mean, the 450 is more power. Go with the ramp slower, you can crack it open a lot later and still get that height and amplitude off the ramp. But like we're seeing with Josh's double flip and Levi's double flip, I would love to see a side-by-side -side comparison of how high they are. Because I know yeah. Josh is much higher because he has to be. Because there's just more mass to rotate. And then once that mass is rotating, it's harder to stop. And this is also <laughs> one of the things that Levi's been working on is trying to center the uh, the different weights on the bike like the tank and and all of those moving parts a little bit more to the middle of the bike so he doesn't have so much rotational force and weight to the outside of the bike which affects the rotation and the movement of the bike in the air well i think you can see that too with that, how the bike just moves around in the air when he's underneath it and how quickly he rotates that thing i mean yeah. it really is i mean i think there's mountain bikes that weigh almost that much these days <laughs> <laughs> So a very nice run from Luke Ackerman. He's going to be pleased with that run. He didn't really do, I mean, he did do the flare, but it didn't count in that run because he was outside of time. And actually, it probably worked to his advantage because he didn't land that flare in the second run as well either. So not a bad run from Luke Ackerman, but going up against a guy like Josh Sheehan, that's a really tough position to be in because we know Josh, who's riding now, and his parents in the audience there keeping a close eye on everything. He is a strong contender. Here we go, Sheeny on course. All right, starts off strong, the double grab flip, and Josh, he's hauling right now. I mean, he yeah. doesn't need to do his gnarliest run right now. He just has to put a safe one in and not mess up, and he's got this, I feel. But but a safety run, a guy like Josh Sheehan don't really go together. Not really, no. Kiss to death flip. 
going back over. Still 42 seconds left on the clock, too, so he's already three jumps in. I li really like that line into the flare there. Yeah, much really quick. Super, super smart lines here. Yeah. yeah, he's going in for his fifth trick, and there's still 30 seconds left. If you're Josh and you know that you've got everything you need to be able to turn it down, do you not do the double back in this run? Well, if you're asking me, I sure as hell don't do the double back. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, Josh has done more double backs in competition than anyone. Yeah. He's got them very dialed. He's going at the ramp. I think he's got this. Yeah. Perfect. Again. Look at that. Yes. Bang on. Awesome. Wow, look at that. All right, let's make the crazy assumption that we're seeing a collision course towards the final with Levi Sherwood and Josh Sheehan. What does Josh have to do in that final in order to take down two double backflips with combos? Well, Josh has the combos. Josh has big double back Yeah, the question is, too. is this ramp set up enough for him as he goes for the flip, or the wear, the, the whip, excuse me. Yeah, this is gonna, it's gonna be tough once again. Makes me happy to be up in the booth and not in the judges' seats because no, thank what you. we're setting up right now is a Taka, Levi, Josh final. Yeah. Well, we already know Taka Higashino's moving on. We already know Levi Sherwood is moving on, as you just mentioned. So now the question remains, which of these two, Luke Ackerman or Josh Sheehan, will be moving on? I think it's fairly evident that we're going to see Josh Sheehan moving on with a run like this. Yeah, I mean, just picture-perfect execution. I mean, Josh is a guy that just, he works out a ton. He takes really good care of himself. He's a super strong dude. I don't he, think he drinks either. He just, he's always uh, down in water. I see him yeah, he, he's drinking just a Yeah, he's just a healthy guy. He yeah. told me earlier he's dealing with a little bit of a groin injury from really? a couple weeks ago. you never know it the way he's riding. No, you would never know right now because he just, I mean, a perfect flare there. Yeah, and a little just, groin injury for him would probably have us bedridden. Yeah, probably. And there's a three. Light over rotation on that, but I don't know if you're going to really pick up on that too much. He just seems to be getting more and more confident with those every time he does them here. So, you know, maybe that's the catalyst for him to take one of those combos into the final with him. Well, I think he's going to have to. Yeah. He watches Levi. He watches Levi's runs. He knows that Levi's pulling the no-handed double backflip. He knows he's pulling the knack-knack double backflip. I'm pretty sure Josh has a Superman back foot, double back. He, he's definitely got a heel clicker double back. He's got a heel clicker. The, the, the question is, and this is the thing for me, I saw him do the double heel the other day, but not here, you know? And it, it's, it's about the ramp setup here for him, I think very much so, whether or not it kicks him enough and whether or not this landing is going to afford him the space he needs to run it out. Because you cannot make any mistakes. So here we go. Well, I bet Scoring you we're going to find out. Sheehan gets out the about first seven helmet. minutes. Sheehan's got two. Lukey knows that, uh, yeah, Sheehan's got three so far. I have a feeling it's going to be a full pull for Josh. So Levi and Sheehan getting five helmets each. So, you know, we're, we're looking at definitely collision course with these two guys. Luke Ackerman's going to take this experience to the bank, though, absolutely riding with the best riders in the world, as he does all year long as well at another series. And then on a bigger course like this and having some of that, we'll call it mentorship from the other guys that are here to try and up his game a bit. You know, in a year, two years, maybe even sooner, Luke Ackerman is going to be back stronger than ever and pulling the bigger tricks. All right, so there you see it, folks. We are down to our final. It's going to be Higashino Sherwood and Sheehan. And in the meantime, we just heard that uh, Lindsay is with Tom Pages, who's been our interview partner all night long. She's down there with him in the paddocks. Tom, we've got our finalists, haven't we? We've got Levi, Taka, and now Josh, who's just got back into the riders' area. How do you think that final is going to play out? Well, it's uh, going to be really interesting. We have a... Uh 
three really good riders. So I don't know, they're all different, all different riding styles. So it's going to be a, a great show for sure. Levi has been out in front, not only in this contest, but also the whip as well. Um, did you see the double backflip in two in one run? So it's made history as well. Yeah, we've seen um, so far Levi uh, coming here in, um, in Madrid, really comfortable on the double flip. It seems that uh, it was his, uh, his focus for for this contest. So yeah, he's comfortable, and uh, but we still have uh, Josh Yan that's doing the, the double flip for a long, long time now, and uh, that's uh, as a, a bigger variety, you know, so it's going to be really interesting for the final. All still to play for. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, well, you know, you mentioned uh, the double backflips, or, or Tom mentioned the double backflips. Let's look and compare a little bit what you were talking about. There's Levi's knack double backflip. He's really clean and really confident. We only saw him mess that up one time, really. And then the no hand double backflip from another angle. I mean, they're just more or less perfect. You know, and, and if you consider that he learned how to do the double backflips from riding a BMX, that's pretty incredible, and we're going to go down and hear from him about this whole situation. He's with Lindsay now. So far, everything going your way, and you're leading with the whip inimitable as well. Yeah, that's a surprise, actually. The whip's um, something I actually forgot about, and they made sure we remembered. Uh, it's new for Red Bull x but it's quite, quite a cool feature. Um, but the run went good. Like I said earlier, just not leaving anything on the table. Um, yeah. On to the next one. You've made history as well. Two double backflips in one run, and that's the first time that's been done here. Yeah, I guess it is. It's um, I really wanted to avoid riding the quarter pipes, to be honest, and that's why I seen I was at you know the only option I seen I was able to do that. Given how many double backflips you've done, and there might be more to come, and then there's been training. Are you getting a bit dizzy yet? Um, to start off, I was, but once you kind of get used to it, you just go through the motions, and it's actually quite fun. Lovely. It looks fun. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. It's the best roller coaster ride ever, Andy. Double backflip, and you're in control, more or less. So these guys getting ready for what should promise to be an absolutely epic final here in Madrid. I mean, from year to year, we've seen the improvements. We've seen the upstaging from rider to rider. And then, you know, that one year where Tom Paget said, hey, I'm going to change the dynamic of riding completely. We always knew double backflips were kind of in the mix, but you know, they weren't really a prevalent factor in a lot of contests. And then Tom Pages came along and threw a monkey wrench into everyone's plans. And it's like, yeah, I'm gonna start doing special flips, bolts, bike flips, flares, and all of these different tricks just changed the dynamic of how these riders had to come to compete. But now we're going back a little bit to see guys like Josh Sheehan and Levi Sherwood. And we even heard that Tom Pachez was talking double backflip last year and the year before. Never did it. But we're kind of coming full circle a little bit, aren't we? Well, it's crazy for me to hear that Levi said he was scared of the quarter pipe, so he was just yeah. going to do a double backflip. Yeah, I'm scared I of the mean, quarter pipe, so I'll do the most dangerous <laughs> trick in the world. Yeah, that's a little crazy to me. Um, I may have chosen differently, but hey, I think Levi, uh, his choices seem to be working out okay for him. So, yeah, very impressive that he's like, you know what, I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna do this. And he just he stepped the game up, huge. Yeah, and the fact that he's pulling them so smooth, so clean, so consistently, and he doesn't seem to have any problem with throwing down the combos in those double backflips. I mean, a few years ago, when we were seeing guys doing a backflip knack-knack, or a backflip one-hander, or a backflip can-can, we were like, woohoo! And now we're seeing these tricks in a double backflip, and there we have our final, folks. It is Takahigashino from Japan, Levi Sherwood from New Zealand, and Josh Sheehan from Australia. Takahigashino will be the first to ride. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final in Madrid. Las Ventas is ready for it. 2017 is ready for it. We're ready for it. Let's get this show on the road. Red Bull X Fighters final here in Madrid with Taka Higashino heading to the tunnel for the first run. Man, that 20 seconds starts fast. It barely gives them enough time to get going here. Yeah. So they gotta be right on the gas. Yeah, as soon as they get the word from the uh, course official, they gotta move. All right, Taka 
bringing to us rock solid backflip to start. He, he went pretty long. deep, but he is going to have to throw down everything in his yeah. trick book right now. He's going to need to put it all in there. But once again, there's always a chance someone has the small, that, that small mess up, like so it's happened along the way here. Stabbing a foot down on an easy trick. And the road over to a one-handed fist pump. All right, coming back around here for the quarter. This will be a big one for him because... Yes. Yes. Nails it once again. Not as much amplitude as we've seen tonight, but he gets it done, gets that variety, gets the use of course, and still got 20 seconds left on the clock here. So does the Cali roll. And the fist pump, I like <laughs> it. He's throwing a little bit of style in each one of the tricks. And there he goes. Time he winding down one. now. Yep. All right, he can take a little breath here as he comes around. What does he have to finish off his last jump here in Las Ventas? Double grab indie flip. Wow. Double Solid grab run indie. from Taka. I think probably his best run of the night, and hey, what a perfect time to bring the best run of the night in the final. Well, that's what the guys at this level do. They they don't fold under the pressure. The pressure oh my goodness, he said, uh, no, I, I didn't think he was gonna do that. He was gonna toss that helmet out to the audience. Troy got excited, out. you were gonna go stand down there and I was gonna go audience. run down there and try and get it myself. <laughs> I'll pull in the China shop through there to get a helmet, why not? Yes. Play in the crowd as he does so well. Taka Higashino with a solid run here in the final. Let's take a look back at some of the slow-mo replays. There's anything we can look for here. Absolutely perfect extension on the rock solid flip. Goes deep on that, but that shouldn't hurt his score at all. No, but he had two wheels down, so it wasn't like yeah. he landed it all funky or anything. KOD flip. Super solid again. Oh, kind of, kind of got a little weird landing there, and then gets nice, perfect rotation here on the flare. Yep. Comes back in for the Cali roll, hanging on with that left hand onto the seat grab. Watch for the fist pump here. There and it is. Spinning, yeah. Gets the fist pump in. And then, man, he held that a long time. Yeah. I mean, I really liked that run. It was a fantastic run. He brought what he needed to bring in the final here. It's up to the judges now, but we got two more riders still to come, and you know what these two other guys are capable of. Levi Sherwood will be staged next. Or is it going to be Josh Sheehan? No, it's going to be Sherwood. Taka always smiling. He knows the worst he can get is third, so that's not too bad. Yeah, he's got a podium spot tonight, no matter what. All right, a quick blowout run for Levi Sherwood, just to get that engine fired up and doing well. And we got a few fans in the audience of Levi, huh? The gang really goes all out, making signs and everything. I think that might have been Ed Lee's family, actually. <laughs> Fluff that mullet, Levi. Get it ready. <laughs> the Trojan lid making a comeback in freestyle motocross. All right, here we go. Final run from Levi Sherwood. Oh. Oh, man. Unbelievable. It can't, it, it can't get any more extended than that. It's just incredible. 
110 feet upside down under the bike, yeah. looking straight through like that is just insane. All right, here comes the first one. All right, knack, 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 knack double. double back. Gosh, just, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Oh my God, I just can't, I love that trick. It is so insane and cool and sick all at the same time. And he's got it so dialed, yeah. it's blowing my mind. Unbelievable. It's a knack three down, and it comes back around. He made a mistake earlier in qualifying and didn't get both double flips in his run. He was a little short, so now he stacked them back to back. No hand, oh! Whoa, wow. my goodness, wow. that looked like it went a little bit away on him. Wow. Well, you and I both saw the same thing, yeah. I think, yeah? It's just the bike is so light, it moves around so much on him, it's insane. And here we go. Last one for Levi to put it down. In the 110. Double grab, backflip, super solid. That is a run right there. Yes. Levi Sherwood, once again, two double backflips in his run. I mean, how is that? He, and not just double backflips, double backflip combos. combos. I get the distinct impression he's pleased with that run. As he should be. Yeah. I mean, look at these extensions he's got. Just watch that bike move. So Gave much a, weight. A hair short off on that, that landing, bike. too. That's unbelievable. Knack, double back, perfect, picture perfect landing. And then really, really he gets tweaked it. tweaked that three out, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, really tweaked out. That was really nice style there. Extra style points, and then gets did the double. Did he just clap his hands? Yeah, but I, I think, think he it, did. <laughs> but I think it actually threw him off axis a little bit, so he had to kind of wrestle it back. Uh, no, he didn't. I just thought he did. That was, that was a bit weird. Yeah, Man, you're right, there's a though. lot going on there in yeah. the air. He's pulling himself back. He got a little back, and he had to pull himself forward and then just stretches out the double grab flip to finish off. I think I figured it out too. If you look, he keeps his body really close to the middle of the bike and his weight low and centered. And with Josh, because he's so strong, you'll see him pull back on the bike, throttle that thing like mad and just wrench it around as much as he yeah, can. He, I mean, Josh definitely muscles it yeah. around and Levi is able to, with a light bike and him being such a little guy, he's able to center himself up on that bike and rotate so much faster. Well, I'm not gonna say Josh doesn't finesse it, but I think Levi's got a little bit more finesse in that double backflip than Josh. I think it's just a factor of him being six inches shorter uh-oh, caught. <laughs> you guys got caught. caught. At him. <laughs> <laughs> kiss cam, kiss cam. You never hold me like that, Troy. Yeah, I've got another. <laughs> All right, Josh Sheehan, our last rider of the night. Wow. This, this guy has been a world tour champion. He knows what it's going to take to get this done. He's seen the run. He had the advantage of watching the run from Levi Sherwood. I can't even imagine what's going through his head right now as he's setting up for his final run of the day know. here in Madrid. I don't know if it's an advantage because unfortunately for him, Levi threw down a perfect run. So Josh is gonna have to bring it the same. He did, he did at that. There we go, double grab, flip to start off. Josh Everyone. does have quarter pipe action though. That's yes. a different speaker maybe. And it's crazy to think that it could come down to that. Use of course could once again be a decider as Josh gets a little aggressive on that corner, almost washed the front wheel out, which... That would be bad news. Yeah, okay, here we go. Or not. Or not, okay, <laughs> kiss it at the backflip. Well, I was wondering if we were gonna see two doubles out of him, but it doesn't look like it. No, he wanted to set up for this yeah. flare. Oh, wow! A big flare, the Indian Huge Air. Flare Indy. I don't know, like Indian Air cannonball flare, can we call it that? Big amplitude, though. Really nice height out of Josh on that one. And the 360 knack doesn't look like he quite got the extension. 
on his leg there. But you know what I'm noticing here? I, I have the feeling that he's got one extra jump in there with time to spare for this last jump, which should be his double back. Let's see if he throws this one out there. He's aiming for it. Yeah. All right. Now, that was super solid, no combo on it, but the difference between the two guys that are doing the double backs is, yeah, okay, Levi's got two double backflip combos, but we have a quarter pipe trick from Josh Sheehan in that run, and yes. he had an extra trick in there as well. Yeah, this gonna be is going to be... <laughs> He's been watching old videos of Renner, Renner for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be a judging nightmare for these guys right now because remember, you only have to win three of five. Let's check out his extension, see if we missed anything. Sixes with him and Levi. They both had perfect extension. Yeah. I mean, they're canceling each other out. Big Cadnack Indy. And then the poked out. Again. KOD. The extension, just like Levi's, yeah. looking through the hands to get really nice. So there's the Indian Air on the flare. This and right here and the extra trick may be. That could, could I be mean, the that could be maker. the deciding factor. Yeah. We have to see. Oh, so no, he got full extension on the knack on the 360. So we saw a 360, which we saw out of Le So everything is the same. Look at the difference here, though. He's yeah, look very how much bigger high he is. on the bike, much bigger on the bike than Levi is. But he got over. So now Levi's slightly. landings were a little cleaner. Yes. But you know, Levi did the extra double back. Josh did the quarter pipe. Everything else, I say, is a wash. Yeah, he might get dance points for the worm. Uh, I don't know about that. That's pretty ugly. It, yeah. So it's. I think it's really going to come down to on that use of course. Uh, do they give it to Josh? Because he did the quarter pipe in a flare, or they do they give it to Levi because he did the the double with the combos and two of them. You know that's the big question. So let's see how the judges have decided this one. They're still working on it. And I'm just glad I don't have to make that decision. I can only sit up here and uh, hypothesize. Hypothesize <laughs> away, my friend. Have a ball. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's all I got. I got. It's going to come down to what they think is more important. The flare or the double back with the combo, the second double back with the combo. Well, our judges are still working on the scoring from Josh Sheehan. A quick update on Christian Meyer, who crashed really hard on that double back flip from earlier. He's got a left thoracic trauma, but he's OK. He's resting comfortably, no major pain, so he is good to go. Good. Yeah, All right, that's, that's nice. really good to hear. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah, what a what a kid with a bright future yes. in the sport. Yeah. Look at Tom. All right, uh, so uh, Tom <laughs> Pages is the last winner here in Madrid. The big question is who will be the next <laughs> winner here in Madrid as the guys have a little bit of fun down there in the paddocks. Tom has ruled this event for four straight years. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here we go. The judges have completed their calculations. Is it going to be Takahiko Shino? Is it going to be Levi Sherwood? Or is it going to be Josh Sheehan? There will be a new winner here in Madrid today. The question is who? Let's see. Josh doesn't understand what's going on right now. He's like, Levi I want to be Sherwood, Sherwood gets the first <laughs> helmet. Levi Sherwood's got the first helmet. He only needs three. He's got two so far. It's looking good for Levi Sherwood. He's got himself a win here in ah. Madrid. Oh, Josh Sheehan gets a helmet. He's got himself at least a marker. And Levi Sherwood, four helmets to one. What an amazing show and contest here for the young Kiwi. Unbelievable two double backflip combos in a competition. He makes history, and we also heard earlier on when he spoke with Lindsay that uh, that he was leading in, yeah it is, it's Ed Lee's crew down there. It's, uh, and he was leading in the whip contest. So wow, what a night for Levi Sherwood if in fact he does take down both. How can you not win with a haircut like that? I know, hey, unbelievable. 
Well, there's our view from up here. Yeah, it's that's what we get here. to see. <laughs> Here with Levi Sherwood, Levi, congratulations. What does it feel for you winning such a prestigious event here in Las Ventas? What does it feel? Oh, you have no idea. It's been a long time coming. It's been a long time since I've won Red Bull X Fighters. So um, they feel like they're getting fewer and far between, but everyone's starting to mean that much more. Okay, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Levi Sherwood, Angel. Wow, he's stoked. Thank you. Yeah, he is stoked. That's the most emotion we've seen yeah. from him after an event's been over in a long time. Yeah, Levi Keith plays it close to his chest, but yeah, hey, he to win in this field of riders is just, like you said, the wins are fewer and far between because it's just everyone is so dang good. Yeah, and, and the prestige of winning here in Las Ventas, there's just another level about taking down a win in this particular venue. I mean, it's it's an incredible location. The fans are amazing. They go bananas for these riders, especially, you know, when they got a favorite, they love to live with that favorite. And so the best whip winner, it is, oh, oh Josh Sheen. Sheen. Yes. So Sheeny gets to take down a trophy from this event anyway. Nice for him. Good job, Sheeny. The whip Inimitable winner in Madrid 2017. Nice job, buddy. Well done. And Sheehan was looking for that wig, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. I thought that was Ronnie Renner down there. <laughs> yeah, the only thing missing from Ronnie Renner's, Ronnie Renner's wardrobe is a red nose and the, and the purple wig. Uh, really nice. Just old school seat bounce yeah. motor whip there, which just, I mean, it just looks so cool, so effortless out of him. Proper skills. I think Levi's may have been a little bigger, but uh, he might have got DQ'd because he threw in the trick. <laughs> but I don't think Levi cares that much right now. All right, so as we get down to the award ceremony, we got Taka Higashino from Japan in third place. Great job by Taka to get in there today with some fantastic effort, amazing skill. And of course, that big grin on his face, enjoying every minute of it. And a quick slow-mo here. As we see, it looked like almost like he got his helmet kind of caught on the bars on huh. the way around. He came in close. There's a lot going on in that yeah. trick. I mean, just switching your, your grab from one side to the other while you're rotating around his shoulder. That I don't know how these guys' shoulders do that. All right, second place here in Madrid 2017 Red Bull X Fighters. That is Josh Sheehan. And he takes down the whip Inimitable as well. And there, coming up to this double backflip of his. Yeah, you can really see the difference between those two double backflips. The, the body extension from him is much higher up. Well, those big guys have it harder, Troy. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't know. All right, and our winner here in Madrid, he said it himself, it's a long time coming. It's fewer and farther in between, which makes it even more special. Ladies and gentlemen, your Madrid Red Bull X Fighters 2017 Las Ventas champion, Levi Sherwood. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations, Levi, and everyone. I mean, what a night yeah. of riding. I mean, we saw a lot of firsts out here. First time to have two double backflips in a run. Yeah. I back mean, to back to back making, to back. History making, once again, we say this often, when we're at a Red Bull X Fighters event, there's always something that happens that goes into the history book. It's absolutely incredible. The level has stepped up from event to event, and yes, we know there's not a lot of them at the moment, but when they do come, they're extra special. Well, just to have three guys in the competition doing double backflips is just yeah. mind-blowing. Yeah. 
and almost everyone doing double grab flips on a 110 footer. <laughs> the level is just. It's insanity. It doesn't stop. And of course, there's. You know, that backflip from Levi Sherwood as we take a look at it one more time, the difference between the two. A fantastic day for Levi, though, and the champagne shower enjoyed by all there on the landing ramp during the awards ceremony. <laughs> and I do believe that Levi Sherwood, he did, he just drank champagne out of his boot. That is nasty. Oh, Shuey. <laughs> Attaboy. That's It'll a good a way to get an, yeah. on, eh? That's a good way to get an after party started right there. <laughs> yeah. So there you go, official Red Bull X Fighters Madrid 2017 final results. Levi Sherwood, Josh Sheehan, Takahiki As you know, Adam Jones in fourth place. Good job. Luke Ackerman and Danny Torres rounding out the top six. Great job by Luke Ackerman to be in and among those guys. And then we see the remaining guys, Rob Adelberg, Michael Malero, Clinton Moore, Harry Bink, Fred Krilios, and of course, Christian Meyer. And as is tradition here in Madrid, the winner of the event gets to tour on the shoulders. And he'll be carried out. That might be the most dangerous thing he did all I night. Know, hey? <laughs> <laughs> Walking down on two guys' shoulders. Yeah, but it's not like he's a heavy dude. So, you know, like one of the girls could probably carry, or, uh, carry Levi around this arena. What an amazing event once again here in Madrid. 2017 is in the books. I would like to say thank you to everybody who joined us for the show today. We hope you enjoyed it. We are thankful that the rain held off for Lindsey Hooper and Andy Bell. I'm Troy Mannering signing off from Madrid. We hope to see you next year, everybody. Take care and ciao.